We have to ask ourselves, what are we mourning about? We're mourning about a, a building that was destroyed 2,000 years ago. But that's really not what we're mourning about. We're mourning about the essence of what Beit HaMikdash was. Beit HaMikdash was a source of unity. Unity for the people, unity for, with God, and a universal unity. It says that Jerusalem is Il a city that is connected. What does it connect? Everything. Cosmos connecting between heaven and earth. It connects between the people, the city that has to make everybody friends. So without Yerushalayim, I feel we don't have that unity in the world. And then we have to ask ourselves, why was the temple destroyed? The temple was destroyed because were, we were lacking unity in the time of the second temple. As the rabbis ask, the first temple was destroyed because of the three great sins of bloodshed, shvichud damin, idol worship, and gilui arayot, adultery. And then they ask, okay, so the second temple, why was it destroyed? And the second temple was destroyed because of sinat chinam. Sinat chinam, if we translate it, um, literally it's free or, or sinat hatred without a cause. Why should there be hatred without a cause? What is hatred without a cause? So what the Natsiv Mivolojin said about this is something very important. They hated one another because they were different. They hated people that came from different backgrounds, from different colors, from different way of worshiping God. Mm -hmm. In the time of the Second Temple, we know that there were many, many different camps. There's a story in the Gemara in Gitin that tells about this woman, Marta Bat Baitus, who from the house of Baitus, who was a very one, it, was, she, it says there that she was the rich woman of Jerusalem, that she wanted to go to the temple on Yom Kippur to hear her, um, her husband reading the Torah. So, of course, we all have to go barefoot on Yom Kippur, but she didn't want to step barefoot in the street. So they took fine cloth from her home to the temple, they spread it in the street, and she walked on, that, on those rugs, on those clothes. This is Malta Bat Baitus. Now, you can just imagine what the people felt towards a woman like this. We could just imagine how this behavior and this gap between the rich people and the poor people at the time of famine creates this hatred, this sinat chinam. Now, I, I look at that and I say, you know what, it's so sad. It sounds too familiar. I mean, and, and if you ask me what Tisha B'Av means for me, when I think of Tisha B'Av and I mourn Tisha B'Av, I'm not mourning 2,000 years ago. I'm mourning the situation of 2,000 years ago that still lives with us today. And we have to learn the lessons, and if we don't learn the lessons, of bridging the gaps between the different segments of society, the temple will not be built. As the rabbis said, that every generation that the temple is not built in, it's as if it was destroyed in their time. I think there's a, a really a big gap Maybe even more today, because um, I think the richer are richer and the poor are poor. So there's really a big gap between the different segments of society. And I think that um, it is not fair and not right that you have 10 families in Israel that have all the assets and all the money, and you have so many people that don't even have a place to live. The tent uprising is really symbolic of the gap that I was talking about in the second temple between the rich people and between the people that have less or between the poor people. And I think that that is a very strong and frightening analogy between today and between the time of the second temple. In 2008 adopted 20 resolutions condemning Israel and six on all other 191 countries including the United States. Israel uh, is uh, ascribed the two great evils of the 20th century, that namely apartheid and Nazism as a kind of prologue or justification for the dismantling of Israel as a Jewish uh, state. Israel has really become in the West the, the garbage can, if you will, of all the sins, I would say, of European history. There's a boycott movements, 
started by people on the left in, in England and France and in Canada. And we have to expose this horrific contradiction. 2030 is a city that is growing fast. Tel Aviv was not built on the seesaw, so people are not aware of that. They took from different architecture styles, elements. There is one significant building, it's called the Gymnasia Herzliya, a symbol for the eclectic style. It was a very bourgeois city. The city of a sophisticated uh, uh, shops that was Tel Aviv in the 30s. To an extent, uh, nothing had changed. 